God, I hope you're ready for a show about Jeff. You mind trying to have an unemotional bang sesh here? Yeah, because we're so not in love. Yeah, love is stupid. Yep, everybody knows you only get married if it's part of a green card thing. Because why would you marry the other person without getting something out of it? Or if it's the Lady of the Lake and you need to gain the Holy Grail. Regardless, whoever you choose, there will be a good old-fashioned wedding with some dancing and undidding. Oh god, it's now time to talk about the famous bodacious awesome sauce relationship that exists between Osmodius, the personification of lust, and Viserali, his humble striped assistant with teeth like a broken shark. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about Hell of a Boss. Or more specifically, if you didn't get my intro, sorry if it's super long, I'm fangirling so hard, the relationship that exists between these two characters. But because Alex Brightman is in the show, as is James Monroe Eichelhart, you know, I've never found out how his last name is pronounced. Y'all know I gotta make references. Many, many references. You knew it was coming to this. Good thing I have mastered the art of tearing convention apart. So how's about we all make a start? Because you never had a friend like me. Hell of a Boss, at its core, is a show all about relationships. Primarily toxic relationships or transactional ones. But to make a point about those, you need to have a couple that is healthy, stable, and monogamous. Usually, Moxie and Millie, aka Eminem, act as a good foil to these bonds, showing that a couple can be loving and stable even in a place like hell. But sometimes, with the exception of unhappy campers, it can seem a little boring. No offense, it's just in a show like this. The point is, this is where Fizzarali and Osmodius come in. So, let's discuss. As you know, Hell of the Boss's main plot is Blitz's transactional relationship with Demon Prince Stolas. In exchange for a monthly booty call, Blitz and his team get access to Stolas's magical grimoire and the ability to travel to the surface. Granted, it's quite illegal, this whole arrangement, because they have no business being up there. And because of their different classes and species, it's super stigmatized. Think of it like Ruby and Sapphire, but they won't get broken if they're found out. Originally, their relationship was no strings attached, but both caught the dreaded disease of feelings. The worst STD next to pregnancy. While Stolas has problems at home and uses his romantic feelings as a coping mechanism, Blitz has a past he's running away from, on a horse with no name, and it comes back to haunt him regularly, in the form of Fizzarali. In Lululand, Stolas is having family problems, and to make it up to his daughter, he decides to take her to the titular theme park. There, Blitz once again makes the acquaintance of the dreaded robotic Fizzarali, or RoboFizz for short. RoboFizz is an animatronic robot meant to entertain kids, and also their parents. As implied by the name, he's modeled after Fizz or Raleigh, the big entertainer who, if I had to describe him, is a cross between Spinel and Beetlejuice, if they were robots, and if Beetlejuice was allowed to date Adam, and he wasn't a disgrace to the dead. Meaning, it's the perfect day to die because this guy happened to be passing by. Don't worry, outside of the reference, this is all important. After one of his shows, RoboFizz mocks Blitz for being a poor, talentless comedian and a friendless loser. Oh, and he calls him Blitzo, which is codenamed for people from Blitz's past. <laughs> is that Blitzo my sensor spot of air? Blitzo! The way it's set up, it seems as though Blitz has history with that guy, and not the real Fizzarali which makes sense by the reveal that he used to work there. Come on, wouldn't you be upset if you worked at Chuck E. Cheese and the animatronics could walk and duck? And Chucky was some catty dude who always stood by the water cooler and talked crap about you? But people liked him anyway. <laughs> Someone's salty. Real or not though, people love me. Granted, I understand why the robot's the way he is or why he exists. 
You know what would make being famous even more awesome? More him. But trust me, there's more to this story. Robofizz and Blitz fight, and it ends with Robofizz being eaten by a giant T-Rex. <laughs> Admittedly, while this is one of the show's best episodes, this scene is pretty anticlimactic. But on top of establishing his history with Blitz, it also establishes another important caveat. Fizzarali is loved and adored, especially his robotic replicas. He's made it as an entertainer, while Blitch tried and failed to maintain the same level of success, only really getting by as an assassin. Plus, you can argue that the two have history, not just Blitz and RoboFizz, but Blitz and the real Fizz. During Blitz's trip and Troop Seekers, the real Fizz haunts his subconscious for trying to strike out on his own. And trust me, that's Fizz, not RoboFizz. Look at his eyes and his limbs. All of this leads into their confrontation at Ozzy's, then the introduction of Osmodius. Blitz ends up going to the club because he wants to spy on Eminem during their anniversary dinner, something I'm still salty they haven't brought up. And because Ozzy's is a club that caters solely to couples, he brings Stolas there by lying and saying he wants to go on a date. I was wondering if you want to come with me to a club tonight. Are you asking me on a date, Blitzy? I know, it hurts. Good thing Blitz gets karma for trying to stick his nose where it doesn't belong. Because no means no, Bill Cosby. At the club, Blitz finds that Fizzarali is the MC, and that his limbs are artificial. Gloriously designed by the big man himself, and uh... For your pleasure tonight. Now, some people have said that Fizz is a disability icon. And okay, I like to examine rep. Just hold that thought. When I saw the episode, I thought they were implying that Fizz sold himself out for fame. Like the rubber hose limbs were a condition of working for Ozzy. Maybe he was partners with Blitz, but Blitz didn't want to work for the big man for some reason. I mean, come on. Would you want to be famous at the cost of cutting off your arms and legs? Where would my tattoos go? But Fizz took the opportunity and he succeeded. Still, not to give away too much at the moment, but Fizz got his new limbs through a freak accident. That's why his face and body are covered in white spots. That's scarring for imps. We still don't know how he met Ozzy or who gave him those limbs, although they imply it might be Ozzy. But the fact he got famous anyways, in spite of his disability, is still something to celebrate. The only thing I want to know is whether most people know Fizz is an amputee, and maybe that's another reason why they like him, because they accept him for it. Or maybe because of the stigma or his own personal choice, he kept a lid on it, and he's afraid of how people will react. Because honestly, this would be an interesting area to explore, especially when he's tied up and he can't access his limbs. Still, I do enjoy how Fizz made a happy life for himself in spite of his past and his disability. Just trying to put it the best way possible, I feel like he probably would have been successful, or at least some level of successful, whether or not the accident happened, even if it defined him. Sorry, the tangent went on a little too long. Fizz starts to introduce the other acts for the night. I know what you mean! I have four of them! <laughs> Okay, keep that guy far away from me. You know, I kind of wonder about this. Beyond it being the first indication that despite being an antagonist, even Fizzarali has his limits. See, a few years ago, Alex Brightman got a death threat at a stage door. You know, that part of the theater actors come out of after the show so they can sign autographs and take pictures and say hello? And because of that, he doesn't really stage door at shows. And he doesn't really go on social media. He even said at The Shark is Broken after he exited the stage door in front of a crowd of fans that he had anxiety doing it. Whoever made that death threat, shame on you. 
Even though I like stage dooring, it's still a privilege, not a right. Now, not that I'm trying to speculate, I'm just saying, I wonder if this and part of what happens later comes from Alex's experiences, or if the crew were trying to make some point about crazy fans and the harm they can cause. Anyhow, this whole scenario turns out to be bad for two reasons. Stolas and Blitz. Avi. As one of the seven deadly sins, Asmodeus ranks above even Stolas. To put it one way, he's like a governor, Stolas is like a mayor or a comptroller. And Asmodeus is probably the highest ranked demon we've seen thus far, next to B. Coming at us from a little imp from the Wrath Ring, give it up for Moxie! With no creative stage name whatsoever! I know, right? Look, whoever watches this video in the comments section, tell me what Moxie should have called himself. On stage, Moxie sings a song, which, while good, is all about romance, and the club they're at is meant to cater to smash and dashes, not complicated love stories that are better than Twilight. As a result, Ozzy, as assisted by Fizzerali, heckle him. Regardless of the circumstances, I gotta say, this is probably my favorite song in the whole show. Also, I like how Ozzy just sits in front of Moxie, like right here. He reminds me of this dude who wears blue and lives in a magical lamp. But why can't I put my finger on why? <gasps> is it the Marquis de Lafayette? Or Thomas Jefferson? Ozzy tells Moxie that while his song is alright, he needs to either sing a new one about smashing and dashing, or he has to... Get the f*** out! Do that. To their credit, the pair do try to offer him advice on how to make the song better, or more up to their standard so that he can stay and have a good night. But when Moxie sings another love ballad, either because he doesn't know anything else or he's just being spiteful, their kindness goes out the window and he is subject to heckling. Blitz, however, comes to his friend's defense and takes all the abuse he was meant to get. I don't know if this was a stupid move or a smart one. Or both. Fizzerali calls Blitz, sorry, Blitz, oh, we really gotta emphasize the O, oh, meaning they definitely got history, out for being a total disgrace who leaves a trail of lovers in his wake. Dude, Blitz, if you really want a girlfriend, go to Fizzerali. He has a card from Dolly Levi, matchmaker. To help them, Verasica, his ex-girlfriend, calls him out for being selfish in bed and leaving her high and dry. And spellcheck, why do you keep changing her name to Veronica with an N? It's almost as annoying as you changing Moxie's name to only have one X and not two. Ozzy himself notices that Stolas is Blitz's date, and rather than be like, dude, what the F are you doing with this pleb? He's like, I know him, that can't be. Ozzy is happy that Stolas, despite his position, is sleeping around with an imp, and that a proud demon prince sold his laugh for a frost, because it's the spirit of lust. On the surface, it's because it's his job, but deep, deep down, maybe he's saying, good for you to have the courage I don't, in spite of what people are gonna say about you. And not only that, to go out in public with a big smile. Like maybe he knows that Stella makes Dolus miserable, or that he didn't choose to marry her, and he's just happy that Stolas is happy. But he has to frame it like mocking. Stolas, for his part, doesn't fight back and just buries his face in a menu out of embarrassment. Which, again, I don't think it's because he hates Blitz or the circumstances, or even the fact that Ozzy brought up his wife and daughter. I think the obvious answer is because of their positions. Stolas couldn't mouth off without making a scene or an even bigger faux pas. But before Fizz and Ozzy can finish their song, Millie steals back Moxie's guitar and knocks Fizz or Raleigh the heck out. The two sing while Ozzy cradles Fizz. Why did you kill off Fizz right now? You know what, if that's the case, then the next 20 minutes of this video, depending on how long it is, it's just gonna be me talking about the show Candle Cove. From my childhood, wait no, I don't have to talk about my childhood, he's okay. Yay! 
okay. And what I like is how he acts when he's okay. When Ozzy checks on him, he's like, ick. But then he smiles at Moxie and Millie's song, almost as if he does like it or it resonated with him, he just can't say anything. Still for beating up on his right hand man and making a scene, Ozzy has his own thing to say. Oh, ain't that just such a happy display? It sickens me. Oh wait, I think I already played that clip. To be fair, by the standards of Hellsians, this is pretty kind. Now, why would Ozzy care that much about a random imp servant? He can always get another one. Is it because he serves him as a mascot and that by putting Fizzarali in decommission, he'll lose money? Or is it because there's something with them? We do see them cuddle and touch each other a few times, and if you thought they were dating, or at least had some arrangement, you'd be right. See, as the sin of lust, Ozzy's duty is to spread it like herpes. Why is this like the third time I'm saying herpes in a video? Lust is a forbidden desire. It involves leaving everything behind, including reason, in the pursuit of something forbidden. Because lust almost automatically means bonking, Nagami is practically the antithesis to it. To make matters worse, like Blitz, Fizz is an imp. An important imp, and likely a rich one at that, but an imp nonetheless. The lowest of the low. Meaning, Ozzy and Fizz have to keep their love a secret. Granted, as we find out in the new episode, it's practically an open secret. The king who will do whatever it takes to save the worst kept secret in all of hell. So what if they're touching each other? He's the king of lust. He's positive about everything. The it's not that. They have a loving relationship. If it's not obvious by now, Fizz and Ozzy are kind of like Blitz and Stolas. If the pair got past their issues and were able to have a meaningful relationship. Now I waited two years to make a video about this couple. On top of that, what I appreciate is how Ozzy was able to find a socially acceptable way to keep Fizzarali around without arousing too much suspicion, compared to Stolas where this happened. <laughs> Sorry, I f***ed your husband. Well, I do think Stella would have hated who Stolish cheated on her with, regardless of their status. I think she was angrier it was with an imp. And on top of that, it wasn't discreet. Come on, what will her friends think? Like that extra thick owl. Honestly, if Stolish wanted to help Blitz in the sense of raising his status, he could have kept him posted at his house or nearby, like, Nick from Handmaid's Tale? Maybe Blitz could be a bodyguard or a driver, like he did in Lululand. He would still be killing people. The only problem would be Stolas having to control his urges and his condescension towards him. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Behind closed doors, Fizz and Ozzy are practically equals in spite of size. Don't worry, we'll get there very soon, just gotta wait. What makes their story more interesting is we find out Blitz really did have a past with Fizz Raleigh in the circus. On Stolas's birthday, I don't think they actually say which birthday, so I'm gonna say it's 10th. He found out that his father engaged him to Stella. To soften the blow, his father, from a mirror, takes him to the circus because he's so good at daddying. And also, he has to scheme to defraud the Sultan, so he's busy. Is there a spot that is close to the front, but also far enough that I don't have to uh, smell the poor? What I like is how Stolas did something similar with Octavia, but unlike his father, he actually went there. Like, he physically went there. She was upset she had to be there, but knowing what we know now about the generational curse, maybe this was pretty good of him. Anyhow, finally they get to the best part of the circus. Now, everyone's favorite thing about circus, <laughs> the mother <laughs> clowns! I know, Cash. Wait, you sound familiar. Were you that dude in that Faulkner novel who built his dying mom's coffin outside of her window like a total teabag? Or were you on Broadway at one point? There, Stolas saw Fizz and Blitz. And while Fizz was an instant crowd pleaser, Blitz wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> horns! Okay, Blitzo, that's enough horsing around. This is important. Afterwards, the boys played with their toys. 
I fought bravely, but I could not run fast enough. They took my legs. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> Blade, stop with the foreshadowing, goddammit. Now, some people have asked the question. Were Fizz and Blitz lovers, or co-workers, or brothers? I feel like considering this scene and what we later learn in season two, they were childhood friends, best friends if that, who grew up in the same tribe, so to speak. At worst, they were like cousins. The type of cousins where you're not related by blood, but your families are close or you were raised together so intensely you might as well be. Especially considering how for his birthday, Blitz's father, Cash, gave Fizzerali a card that said, I wish you were my son. Like, dude, that is fucked up. Your real son is standing right there. And your daughter's somewhere. I don't think she appreciates it. Between you and Payman, you're only second rate. Soul is like Blitz and wanted to have a playdate with him. So Cash agreed, solely because he wasn't Fizzerali, who had to do more shows that day and they could use Blitz to steal money. If I get caught. Don't you want to be able to help me and your mama out? Of course I want to help mama. Don't worry, I did not forget about Ozzy. Trust me, all of this is super important. Plus, admittedly, because my helpful boss videos don't get a lot of views, I don't know if I'm able to make a video solely about Fizz, so I'm gonna combine the two here and hope I get lucky. Plus, guys, we got a new episode. Oops. For those of you asking, yes, I was freaking waiting for this when I saw it in the trailer. What made it better was when I met James at Spamalot in DC. And I said I liked him in the show because I made videos about it. And he said he and Alex had an episode and it was coming out soon. I squealed so hard and I got an awesome selfie. Or at least maybe I tried. James, if you're watching, you were so good and I can't wait to see your show on Halloween. Granted, before I get to the good parts, I feel like I should give some criticism, if only because it's relatively minor. This is easily my favorite episode of the whole season. The dialogue is great, the emotional moments are right there, the comedy is hilarious, and I like the team-ups. But it probably should have been two episodes, not one. Heck, maybe even three, because it feels a little clustered. Again, it's good, it's just like they pack way too much. The first episode could have explained Fizz's backstory and how he came to meet with Ozzy. Just because, like I said above, we still have no clue how they met or how Fizz became Ozzy's, like, MC. Meanwhile, the second episode could have Blitz and Fizz meet up and make up. Or have Fizz or Raleigh learned that Blitz was the one who wrecked RoboFizz. He did say he was still salty about it in Ozzy's and wanted to make whoever broke it pay. Did any of you hear about the batch <laughs> that happened at Lululand? And then slap a fat <laughs> in it, cause I'm very much looking to sue. Unless maybe the next episode's gonna be about that. Maybe have him be like here, you ruined my life and now you ruined my copy? I'm gonna sue you into oblivion, buddy boy. Good thing you have a prince beside you, but then maybe something happens, Blitz could tell him it was an accident, and while Fizz isn't ready to forgive him, he takes baby steps and drops the lawsuit. Then, the next episode could have them get kidnapped, and like they do here, and forgive each other. I don't know, it's pretty minor. And while I do think there's the occasional criticism of season 2 of Hell of a Boss, especially the world building and all the subplots, it's not as bad as people make it out to be and it's still pretty enjoyable. If anything, it's the new Steven Universe. A good show, but should have maybe a little more focus. Anyhow, I have to get into the episode because this video is long enough. I have a life. The episode begins one morning in the Ring of Lust. Fizzerali wakes up on top of Ozzy like a cat. Love it. Granted, we saw in Ozzy's that the big man can shapeshift, so thankfully I don't have questions about Skitty and Whale Lord. Fizzerali gets ready for the day. The most adorable PJs that I kind of want to seal. And then he wakes up Ozzy in the most adorable way possible. Rise and shine, Ozzy! <laughs> oh, again with the horn. 
Don't blame me. Blame how f***ing fun they are. Is it bad I like to think this is how Beetlejuice gets ready for the day? I wonder if he has striped pajamas like a prisoner. The pair get ready and Fizz says that Ozzy has a lunch meeting with Stolas, which sucks, but hey, at least they have breakfast together. Unless you want me to take a crack at cooking again. <laughs> no. Never again. What? Maybe I could burn the milk this time. These two are so cute, it makes my blood turn into sugar. Despite how healthy their bond is. Like, look at this moment right here. Burgers! No, it's too early for burgers, you maniac. Burger time, burger time, burger time! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could combine the two and have a breakfast burger. Wendy's makes a pretty good one. Wendy's, sponsor me. At breakfast, Fizz reads a magazine about the rumors of Ozzy and him being in love, which is the very opposite of lust. Now, the way I thought it was gonna go down was from the trailer, Fizz and Ozzy were gonna get outed or blackmailed and then have a huge scandal. Kind of like Renly and Loras if we go by the books. But that gives Solus the courage to finally come out with Blitz. Because, hey, if a Sin's doing it, why can't a Prince? Regardless, while I think this might be a plot line down the line, the extent we get is the two hugging one morning and then an assistant walks in on them, with the implication this happens almost every day. That was close, huh? While Ozzy has a full schedule, Fizz has to go to the greed ring for a meeting. And he promises to also get milk he won't burn. Burn! Yeah, yeah, I know. I can pick up some more while I'm out today. <gasps> oh, God. When people say they're going out to get milk, it's almost as bad as them saying they're going out for a pack of spokes. No wonder Ozzy has problems with Fizz being out on his own. But Fizz promises he can handle it. You worry too much. You know I ain't afraid of ropes. Sides, I'm slippery. Is that how you stick it to the man, Giuseppe? Why'd I call you Giuseppe? Anyhow, I gotta say, once again, Fizz is so cute. Like a little pug I keep on my fridge. I think he might have stolen Stolas's position as my favorite character, especially since I now find him way more relatable. I can handle it! Come on, big daddy! Please! You know, normally, I don't like when people call their SOs daddy or big daddy or something like that. It sounds weird and kind of incesty. You know what? He's too cute, so I'll make an exception. Fizz promises he'll be quiet and not attract any attention. Man, it's great not being in the spotlight for once. Yeah, maybe you should have left the dogs at home, dude. But I am appreciating the one dog with the wheelchair. Like the one he pets it later. Wait, is that what they call the wheels they put on the back of dogs who need them? Wheelchairs? Too bad that because of the laws of literary coincidences, he just has to run into blitz. Literally. Whoa, 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 whoa! Ouch. They have some playful catty banter, and that seems to be it. We've been in each other's relative vicinity twice in the last 15 years. Twice is already way too much. Oh, I'm gonna steal that. But as we all know, Blitz doesn't take insults lightly, and this leads into a fight. Around the same time, Stricker has decided to team up with Moxie's father, Crimson, whose voice I'm finally used to. Probably because Moxie isn't in this episode. No offense, it's just... I don't know. Stregger wants to work with Crimson and promises he's not a Chaz, so there'll be no Chaz time. Aww. Plus, they have mutual enemies. Crimson promises Stregger that if he can deliver something of value, he'll hire him. <laughs> Idiots. Elsewhere, Ozzy has his meeting with Stolas. Stolas has come to ask Ozzy for advice, which Ozzy initially thinks, because of the club, is all about love. If you're looking for a love potion, you came to the wrong f***ing <laughs> guy. I don't f*** with that artificial <laughs> Lust shouldn't be about force. It's an art. Okay, I know people have said this doesn't fit in, but I don't mind. So what if Verasica and her crew made people fall in love? 
They were villains and it was presented in a negative light. Besides, we see that with Queen Bee, even the sins have their limits. I mean, Bee is all about indulgence, but for the right reasons. Instead, Stolas wants a special crystal that many of the citizens of Lust are able to procure. It will legally give him a way to go to the surface and a human disguise to boot. And part of me wonders if maybe it's a test for Blitz, like, I'm giving you an out. I love you, but do you really love me or are you just using me? Reluctantly, Ozzy refuses because Fizz and Blitz have history. My heart bleeds for you, but my partner, uh, business, Partner, Fizzarelli hates your imp guy, Blitzo, right? Yeah, hates. Shortly afterwards, Ozzy gets a text message from Crimson via Fizz's phone, which I'm sure is probably eating him up, considering how he insisted that Fizz has to keep his phone on him. You probably just asked if I know who I'm dealing with. No, Crimson, that's not what he asked. The weakest and most non-threatening of the shits. Well, clearly you never met B. Crimson says he's offering him a contract, and he has until the witching hour, whatever that is, I don't know what that is, to accept. Or if Izzarali is gonna go the way of Burr's political career and Lydia's mother. Come on, isn't it nice to have Osmodeus by your side? And because Osmodeus can't just go down to greed and get Fizz, or you know, send Stolas, we get a pretty funny subplot of the two nobles trying to negotiate a contract for Fizz's release. And it's good Stolas is there as his legal retainer, or pseudo-legal retainer, because the first contract would have had this happened. The contract giving Crimson all of Ozzy's factory assets and giving him permission to use Fizzarali's head for a wall decoration. Just making sure you're paying attention! As it turns out that much like owls, Fizzarali doesn't like captivity. <laughs> I just want to go home. Trapped in a cage like a ghost who can't interact with the world, Blitz and Fizz talk. And we find out that Blitz is in deeper denial about his relationship than Dale Gribble. Call me and try and see how my day was, and he'll pretend to care about me and comment on my photos and laugh at my jokes. Oh, well that's definitely your clue right there. Being a self-hating peasant, Stregger talks to them and tries to manhandle Fizz for privileges and sleeping with a dude, a rich dude. This loudmouth here has the sense to only fuck his rich fuck instead of being a little purse dog. Oh great, the fuck supremacist is on my side, wonderful. Oh crap. Ah, ever heard of mouthwash? <laughs> Face! Wait, you can escape at any time? Why does this remind me of the Keeper of the Reaper? Fizz is still struggling and just wants more than anything to go home like a poor little baby. Plus, I'm sure Mammon, Mammon, one of those two, is hitting up Ozzy like, where the heck is Fizz? Blitz says he can get them out if they work together. And we find out that maybe the purse dog analogy is kind of correct because Fizz or Raleigh, unlike his robot selves, cannot fight worth a darn. I wonder how they would interact though. Good thing we also get a ton of lore. Throughout that season and several episodes in season one, they were teasing Blitz as having done something so horrible it caused everybody in his life to leave him. The general theory was Blitz did a performance and he tried to do something with the special effects that went haywire. Just saying, it would explain all of the posters in the background. Turns out, the reality is much, much worse and much, much tragic. On Fizzarali's birthday, I'm guessing maybe it's 15th or 16th, Blitz accidentally started a fire because he knocked over the birthday cake. But Fizz did not know that. All he thought was Blitz was jealous and jealous enough to try and kill him. I mean, he was jealous, but not the last thing. And then you just left me. I lost so much because of you and you selfish piece of <laughs> You didn't even care. I did care. Fizzarelli's life was ruined. He was maimed and their circus was permanently ruined. Plus, it also explains why Barbie hates her brother. The fire killed their mother, who was implied to be too sick to run away. But you have no idea what I lost in that fire. And the grief caused Barbie to turn to drugs. To make matters worse, Blitz apparently ran away, 
rather than get Fizzarelli help. And then afterwards, he never went to the hospital to see his friend. As it turns out, Blitz tried, and he was really running away to get help. Okay, you're right, it was all my fault, okay? I, I should have done more to help. I was, I was trying. There was so much going on. I was trying to get help. Come on, his mom was in that fire. Plus his sister, and heck, maybe even his father. We don't know if that's what killed him. But a miscommunication caused them to hate each other for 15 years. You didn't want to see me. I never told them that. You didn't? No, and no one told me you came. Oh. People have wondered who the culprit was. My idea is if the fire did not kill him, it was Cash. Because Blitz essentially caused his Cash cow to break its leg. Or maybe the lambs from Sloth, like some people have been saying. Which could explain why that one lady warned Blitz not to go after his sister. They're about to escape when suddenly they're pounced on. So now it's up to Fizz to distract Striker and Crimson, while Blitz makes them a way out. And he does it for a cool song. It's not Lululand, but it's still really good and it's super catchy. And I listened to it when I was writing this review. Plus at one point, I think he does the incomparable Squidward, so I five. Besides, you know what's also awesome sauce about this? We get Betty Juice. Italian Betty Juice in robot form. Finally! Thankfully, they escape and actually have fun together. Almost like old times. They find a car and are about to hotwire it out. All will be saved. Wait, not yet. It's Striker. I'm through losing these fights. This worthless little pet reeks of his overbloated master. Okay, now I get why that one actor couldn't come back. To save Fizz, Blitz shoots a tank full of gasoline and starts another fire. Idiot. With Fizz unable to escape because his limbs are wrecked and he's likely reliving his trauma. Oh my god, poor baby. Blitz is faced with a choice. Only this time, he taps into his circus training to rescue him and correct one of his biggest mistakes. At first, Fizz is angry. You blew me up again! I did, but this time I stuck around. Would it rock up the moment if we made out right now? Uh... Elsewhere, Fizz comes home, just as Ozzy is about to do something with that contract. Fizzy! <laughs> Ozzy! <laughs> oh, a Disney-esque ending if I do say so myself. The lawyer tries to escape, but don't worry, he gets put in his place. They make it home, where Ozzy swears Fizz won't leave the palace again without protection. Or likely never again. Well, don't worry. Today I learned that I hate going outside. You won't have to again. Unless it's for work, which will probably prove to be a problem down the line. And Ozzy, likely motivated by Stolas, decides not to hide his love for Fizz, if only in front of their employees. Baby steps. <laughs> Us. You know there's eyes around. I know. I don't care. Cause they know if they tell anyone, I'll break them. Eh, good point. While repairing Fizz, Ozzy tells him about Stolas's request. So, I told him? No. Let him have it. Excuse me? Yeah. Why not? You could say he earned it. Aww. I gotta keep saying some other than aw. Their relationship once again repaired, they go off to do piggish, lustful things. Well, great relationship. However, I do have questions. I'm sorry for beating a dead horse, but once again, how did you guys meet? And how did the romance spout? Still, I can't wait to see more of them. And we might actually, considering how the next episode is apparently all about Fizzarelli and Mammon. Or Mammon? Anyhow, um, Bye. Actually, fun fact, the bye I do at the end, that's a reference to Beetlejuice. Always has been. So goodbye, cruel world. Dolly will never come this way again.